Excellent. Oh, okay. So uh, I've been working with a first-time buyer uh, over a year and a half now. Uh, you know, a single uh, mom, young, probably in her early twenties, and with a, a kid. And you know, obviously last year she was just getting beat up. You know, uh, always being outbid and everything. Well, today I got her in a condo. Five grand on the asking and the snow came for everything. All right. Oh, okay. You sold something? No, I didn't sell nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all kinds of good intentions, you know. Um, two things. One, Richard got something for you for uh, at the top golf, so um, we got a fun <laughs> coming up. So you know, that's a, that's a little extra little something good. <laughs> Uh, I had a little family gathering last night, um, family I hadn't seen in, well, 10, 12 years, so it was just really, really good. Got together with a, a lot of good family and everything else, and then found out we had a, a cousin that we didn't know about, and she uh, was adopted and everything else way back mm -hmm. when. To make a long story short, she found her family, so, oh. which was really, really good, us, you know, so. <laughs> Um, that was really good. Plus, she is also interested in um, selling one of her houses. And then, of course, another cousin that there is looking to buy another house. So, you know, it was just one of those good time family. Did you go to Red Lobster? Oh, yes, I did go to Red Lobster. <laughs> No, no, that was no. That was Anytime good. I see Stephen T outside of those days, I love him. Sure, I love to see. Gotcha. Anyone online? Anyone else? I would like to share something. It's Claudia. Claudia. Oh, yeah, Claudia, go ahead. Claudia, wow. <laughs> and Stephen T. Webb, it is amazingly wonderful <laughs> to see you. Good to see you, Claudia. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I had a condo I sold to a really nice lady about seven years ago. And, um, you know, I've texted with her occasionally, invited her to come do some quilting projects and other stuff. And she reached out to me just the other day to tell me that um, she's gonna move back east with her daughter and she wanted to know what I consider selling her condo for her. Oh, wow. Hey. So hey, I have a condo in touch. market. Congratulations, Claudia. Yeah. Not as a son. Oh, not as a son. <laughs> not All right, I have an event uh, Saturday about investors, and I end up getting two listings out of the event. Congratulations. I'm going to San Francisco and then I'll be back at it. So you do investor meetings and you get listings, and I love it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And it was, was it in the Arabic? Uh, the listing, yeah, it was. I uh, have it translated and uh, attached the Arabic as the, like the flyers in yeah. Arabic. Mm -hmm. And I did the speech as a, you know, yes, All right. I, I did it. Fantastic. <laughs> so, way to work in this. I like that. Awesome. Anyone else? Congratulations to a capper. Cool Jeet. Have you done it? People are so nice of you. What was the deal? Uh, oh, I think it was only 3.2 million. No, 3.2 million. Yeah, yeah. Double ended, right? Double ended. Oh, double ended. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a way to cap, right? So, right. congratulations. <laughs> she is going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Vicky, is Vicky? Was Vicky on? Ah, oh, Vicky, come on up here. Come on up. I don't know if you remember her, she was with us on Red Day. Yes. Yes. So literally, I get a I get a referral from another agent saying, you need to talk to us a few months ago. I said, okay. I'm literally at five o'clock driving to an appointment, but I just call and say, hey, actually tomorrow's Red Day. So we can't have an appointment, but if you want to just come to Red Day, we do all this volunteer work. She's like, I love that. So no, I was like, and I think she worked harder than most of the agents. So I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, go ahead and tell us about yourself. Um, so I'm a I'm a flight attendant. I've been oh. flight attendant for a whole chunk of time. Oh, so I've always had a passion for real estate. I opened up a notary business for the last four years during the pandemic. So I'm just now I was kind of towing my way into real estate, and then finally I was like, okay, it's time to rip the bandaid off. Just do it. <laughs> and so then here I am. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. 
Uh, just listed coming soon on there. So remember, put them together, put them together, put them together. Although inventory is fine. So. But if you have condos, single family, half plexes, they're all there. North Island's all the way to the classic oh, no. Plus this thing. Uh, it's on our Facebook page as well. So hit your listings. Yeah, uh, we have 24 Sabre Court. It's a four bed, three full baths, one bedroom and bathroom downstairs with an office. Um, 2,600 square feet. Shop the price is at 660. My buy, my sellers are buying in North Lake for the next month, so bring a buyer for that. We also have 7430 Circle Parkway. Um, that's 95823. That's a three bedroom, two bath, with a converted garage. Um, that's that's at 425. And then I just picked up an off market listing this morning in Roseville. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, over 2,200 square feet. Um, the sellers are moving out of state for, for a cash investor or a cash buyer or somebody that can three weeks. Um, I just posted on the Facebook page a couple pictures and a little description about it. Um, so if you have any buyers in Roseville, there's no HOA, no metal roofs on that property. Uh, it's about $700,000, $699. Uh, right near Galleria. Right near Galleria. Mm -hmm. So if you have anybody wow. moving in Roseville Six. that is competing with a lot of people, but you know they can close quick, let me know and I can get you in by tomorrow. Wow, all right. That's good. Uh, alert, alert, price reduction, price reduction. <laughs> <laughs> Our wonderful property on Penland, uh, you know, has been reduced to 439. I don't know why, I don't know why everybody has to come out to this place. I mean, it's a wonderful place. It shows well, and does everything else. And there's probably buyers lined up, they just don't know about it. So tell somebody, bring your client. <laughs> Actually, if you want to know, we're having a training later today at 1 30. Yeah. On ship. On ship? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll tell you. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, Thank you. Come on. I have one in Davis. It's a 4 2, it's 2,029 square feet, 865. It's a great home, great location. Bring me a buyer. No Villanova. What? Villanova. <laughs> right. No, no, Belmont. No. No. I've been talking about Villanova. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone online? Have a listing they want to pitch? Yes, hi. This is Josephine. He's Sadio. Hey, Aloha. Anyways, um, I do have a, a property in Rio Linda, 733 Albemarle. It is 1,640 square feet. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful home. Um, RV access, I did drop the price to 499.5. I am getting some bites, but it's available to show um, short notice. Uh, the the seller is living there minimally, so bring your buyers. Thank you, Josephine. And Josephine, are you co co coming in from Hawaii over there? I am. I am. Um, <laughs> you know, she goes back and forth, so she joins her office, and uh, she's living. Yes, there. yes. It is. Uh, yeah, I live part time. Um, I raise my kids in Antelope. I I also have a home there too, so I do go back and forth. <laughs> And um, yeah, for some reason, I'm being kept busy here. I just got another listing in Kauai. So if anybody else wants to buy a house in Why? Kauai. Yeah, you, go. um, you got your Hawaii hookup. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. OK. <laughs> thank you, Justin. All, All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Anyone else? Yes, I'd like to. Mine is the coming market. It will be hopefully active next week. Um, and it's um, the address is 7340 Hamden Place. Uh, it's uh, considered Sacramento. Um, lots of upgrades, beautiful uh, bamboo floor throughout. Um, looking uh, price point around three, 380, 385, we're, we're still kind of figuring all that. It's a downstairs unit. Um, access to tennis courts, swimming pool, um, a uh, locked community, a gated community. Um, 
and I'll give you more information as soon as we go active. Awesome. Congrats, Kaladi. Thank you. Anyone else? I have one that's going to be coming up probably mid-July. Um, it's my mom's house. I don't know. Some of you know that my mom passed away about three weeks ago. Um, and we're going to sell her halfplex in Kirby Woods. Uh, it's a two bedroom, two full bath, uh, 1,086 square feet. Um, pretty nice little quiet community at Kirby and Vernon. And uh, it's going to need some work. So uh, we're probably going to price it at about 349. Hi, Good listing. Sorry about the situation. Anyone else? Okay. Listings are coming out there, right? So, just closed. Whoa. Par Matwell, six closed transactions. Jacqueline, four. Laura, three. Michael and Taylor, three. Amy, Colgi, AZ, Jake DeRosa, and Michael Brown, two. Tuan, Alicia, Andre, Carolina, Dan, Dana, sorry, Jay, Eternity, Jorge, Christina, Lindsay, and Valentina, all one. Congratulations on your closing. Is it still closing this morning? What? Hello. Spotlight vendor. The River Group. Hello. Welcome to River Group. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. I'm Brian with Home River Property Management. Um, we're your partner for all things property management and investor related. So if you're working with an investor and they're looking to buy a single family home or a multifamily property, and you're looking for market rent analysis, what's the trend going in that market, that place this time, reach out to me. I'm happy to provide you this information. I'm a tool for you guys to utilize uh, to make your sales strategies better, um, your offers more competitive, and, uh, and anything General questions in the past, it's been questions about uh, trying to, you know, work with the client who's trying to sell the house. We've got some COVID issues and we're not getting access, things like that. Reach out. I can give you some general information about tips that can help you and guide you down the right path. Um, anything else? Well, you don't reach out. The... I think that's coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right. All right. All right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you stay up here. So a few things that uh, we wanted to bring up and to talk about is just thinking about how you guys are presenting um, information, changing your vernacular, um, keeping yourselves out of you know situations that you may not intend to wind yourself up in, but can easily get you there. Some of the phrases that we put up here are commonly used ones that the industry is, is phasing out and trying to do away with. Master bedroom. No, we want to you know, start switching over to using primary principal. Uh, Walk-in closets. This is a bit of an issue when it comes to disability and fair housing. They're saying we should be using oversized, extra, deep, wide, vast, using more descriptive terms rather than uh, just your traditional uh, walk in instead of family using household. So is your household growing, you know, for the growing household, because this way you're not talking about, is it a family? Is it, you know, what that family dynamic is? Is it a single, why can't I rent it as a single person or with roommates, things of this nature? You're broadening who you're speaking to. And then walkable, you know, walkable to the, to the, to the park right down the street. It should be, it's a half a block away instead. Give, give, give what that looks like two minute commute, things like that, so that you're keeping yourselves out of potential harm when it comes to this, um, fair housing investigations, complaints to the DRE. Um, the D um, SAR used to have on the website and CAR did a list of phrases and words that they wanted you to take away from. They, they removed the list saying, a lot of it has to do with intent on how you're doing it. It's usually not how somebody intends the message to come across, it's how it's perceived. So these are just some tips to try to help you guys out. Love that. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tech update. Our MCTT, Mr. Vincent. Good. So we have these cool little uh, micro designs. Uh, can we move the slide? Yeah, that slide fell off. Okay, sounds good. Um, <laughs> Disappeared. Yeah, I was expecting another one. 
Uh, designs for teams are coming. This is exciting because you guys have not been able to do that that are on teams right now. You're making your own, supposedly, hopefully. Uh, now you'll be able to use a team version of that where you go in and just change your profile picture and your information, but have a static team set up so it's clear across the board for every team member. That's coming pretty soon, probably in the next two weeks, I would say. Oops. And then we have access to a new import wizard. Before you had to use the KW uh, CSV to import a large group of contacts into your database. You no longer need that. You can use any CSV and map those things over so that they automatically get imported in. If you need help with that, please contact me because it can be a little bit Weird as I worked with Dexter on his a little bit, and there were some nuances where it's kind of strange, so we didn't follow through with it. Uh, but get with me, we'll sit down and talk about it. And if you don't want to do it at all, let me know because we have people that'll do it as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Oh, So we have these tech training uh, <laughs> opportunities. Uh, they're on KW enablement. They are sometimes free, sometimes paid for. They're always available for you to do. There's tons, tons of different opportunities for you to do. There's ones for so, solo agents new to command. Um, come talk to me. <laughs> um, your marketing stuff, this is a paid one. It tells you how to use designs in command and how to do it quickly, kind of like with Canva and that kind of stuff. I am not a marketing whiz. I know Kayla is our marketing whiz. So definitely, if you have any questions about that, you can definitely pick her brain because I'm not really great at it. So, but they, these are always available for you at the KW Marketplace. Like I said, some of them are free, some of them are paid, but always check them out because we're changing them and they are available. So if you go to command up in the right corner, there's going to be a little Little store, store, store symbol. If you click that, you go to the marketplace. You'll be surprised. They have a lot of companies that can integrate with command that you can start doing things, even lead generation, cold calling, things like that. For There's also DocuSign trainings and that kind of stuff. As well. Yeah, and some of it's free, right? So yeah. if you, is that on KW.com? No, you can only access it through your through your command. Yeah, because it's built into command itself. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, just to remember, full spectrum marketing, in house marketing is being launched in here. And actually, some of you are already she's doing some pre launch stuff. So. Uh, but if you want to, she is right over there where Amy and coaching used to be. So go ahead and talk to her. She's doing consultations now and printing stuff for clients and binding. We have binding soft and hard covers. Uh, today, oh, shift is happening. Yeah, buddy. At 1 30 to 3. I am very excited about this content. I've done a lot of preparing for this, but um, how many are you feeling a little O oh, shift right now? Mm. Oh, shift. Who's, who's, <laughs> have, who's having like price reductions and and saying, oh my gosh, this should have sold like with 15 offers. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should have, should have, should have. So good thing, I want to bring a lot of my expertise and Amy's expertise. I started in 2008. Real estate. I don't know if you guys remember 2008. It was not a pretty situation. So, um, and I have obviously still around. So, and my got my real estate team started. Team started while in uh, the recession, and um, we're going to bring a lot of great down to earth content. So it's really going to be like, how do we find motivated buyers and sellers? Where are they? What lead generation techniques are we going to do to find these people? Because in this market, you're going to be very diligent about finding people, we're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna show you some stats, but most are projecting a, a drop in number of closes by about 25%. So if you think about your business right now, how many did you close in the last year? If I took a 25% reduction on that, 75% reduction on that, what would, what would that be? That means if you did the same things you did last year, Going in the next 12 months, you're going to have a 25% reduction in probably the closest you had. Just being normal. 
you stick in your head in the sand, you're gonna have worse, right? right. Actually, some agents are gonna stick their head in the sand anyways. So even if you just did the same, you probably would be more than the same fight because agents are gonna stick their head in the sand. But if you don't wanna stick your head in the sand, if you actually wanna make this a career, please come. And this is gonna kick off a whole series of, of shift events we're gonna do. We're gonna go deep into how to actually navigate this market. The good part is, it's a market that requires a great mindset. It's a market that requires a great skill set. You have to be really skilled as a, you have to overcome a lot of hard objections <laughs> in this market. And how do you sell homes? How do you get sellers to come in at the right price at the first time, right? How do you negotiate these things? So that's happening today at 1.30 to 3 o'clock. Don't worry, we will keep repeating this and bring other trainings. I'm already excited and I'm bringing BISBO people and, ex and uh, extreme open house people in to teach some of these classes. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun through this series to teach you how to do that at 1.30 today in this room please be there we actually have i don't know sam said how much sam i think we're going to be pretty tight so we have rsvps was that 40 or so RSVPs. 40 rsvps including guests so we have uh, some even brokers from others offices coming so um so is this one on zoom is this on zoom. zoom it is on zoom in person and on zoom i also wanted to add to this i had a really good conversation with my master this morning and we were talking about this exact thing that we're going to see a drop in uh, in transactions, That's moving back into a more normal market, it's the market I started in. But we're also going to see a drop in agents in the business. So that's a huge opportunity for all of us. Yes, there's going to be a drop in transactions, but we're also going to see a lot of agents that were, you know, fly by night. They're going to leave the market, and then we're going to be left behind, and we're going to pick up that slack. So there is a huge opportunity. Millionaires are made. In shifts, yeah. That's wealth the most is built. People make the most income in hot markets. Most wealth is built in. Yeah. I'm very excited, actually, because I know how to navigate the shift, and this is where you can reset your thing. Think about what happened in March 20, March and April 2020. Yeah. What did a, a lot of agents do? Stick their head in the sand, right? Stay at home. The agents that kept working, what happened? Their business they blew up, right? When I say there's, if we go into a recession and 75% of the business is still happening, most businesses would be like, awesome. <laughs> I bet contractors are really scared right now. How about retail, vacation, right? So, so um, we're going to change the wording also from shift to we have a calming on the market. It looks like a shift because we went from the most transactions that ever happened in the United States in one year to calming that down to a normal level. It looks like a lot, but just know you were in the greatest year ever in real estate by closing. So. Right. Um, lead generation on Instagram that is happening 2 p.m. Tuesday, July 12th in the room with our very own Tammany. She's going to tell you how to do it nicely. I know a lot of you want to show your pretty face. Do our barbecue July 16th, 2 to 6 p.m. Please sign up. Please RSVP. Click there. We have a lot of people coming. There's going to be a lot of games for um, train the presenter July 26, 27 in this market center. If you have the dream of just presenting better, you want to do seminars and show up better, you want to get in front of groups, you want to teach classes, I want to be a coach, I want to be a trainer, please show up. It is a great two day event and it's your path to getting on your group. Mega Agent Camp, August 23rd and 24th. This is in Austin, Texas. Who's been to Mega? Who's been to Mega, Mega Camp? Oh, oh really? Carnegie and oh. Wow, we gotta go. It's a lot of fun. We gotta go to the dual right. piano piano bar. That's super fun. But Mega Agent Camp, please come 23rd, 24th. That will be in Austin, Texas. Um, we will be there. It'll be a lot of fun. There's no slide for it. Oh, there's no slide for it. Oh, okay, okay. Who wants to go to Hawaii? Yeah. Ah, I got more. Okay, all right. I like that. All right. September 25th, oh, you're already going? Yes. <laughs> September 25th through 29th, there is a four day, we're calling it Elite Week, okay? It is in Hawaii, in Honolulu at the Outrigger. It is happening in Northern California, Hawaii. So the region is putting this on. Thursday is reserved for Elite, top 1% of the agents. So most of the top agents are, being, are gonna be there as well. The first three days are presentations of masterminds with the top 1%. So if you want to write off a Hawaii trip, good time to be doing it. 
We will get that out to you um, via email. But just so you know, I'll be there. Uh, Michael Soros will be there. We're going to have some of our top agents will be there as well. Um, and I encourage you to make it along. Some of the speakers include Lance and Karina Loken, who run one of the top teams in the entire company. Actually, they were number one last year. Were they number one last year? Good for them. Over 3,000 transactions. Oh, my God. And then uh, Bob Lucido, as well as his wife, was the number one individual. Or most GCI. Most GCI. Most GCI, most GCI in the entire company. Bob Lucido, our top luxury agent, is going to be there. Mark King, the president of Keller Williams, is going to be there. It's going to be a very high level discussion and a lot of fun on a good beach. So. Um, well, it's not on the beach. It's not on the beach. Afterwards, you can. What's the cost? Um, the ticket is about seven hundred dollars to attend the event. I'm um, obviously then flight and hotel. It's not a. It's not a traveling right now. It's not a cheap endeavor. I can say that. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you go, you can write it off. So if you have that extra. I'm going to stay a few extra days. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Happy Fourth of July! Fourth of July, we will be closed next Monday. I hope you're having fun. If you have nowhere to go and want to have fun, I'll give you my address on my bike rack. Bike, Camden Falls Way, right here. We do a little shindig. If you want to join us with fireworks and park? No park. What's that? There's no park program. <laughs> no car program. Yeah. No. No school. No school. All right. Y4C two T's. Just so you know, um, I don't know if you knew, but we changed the T's. It used to be win-win, integrity, customer's commitment, <laughs> communications, <laughs> creativity, teamwork, trust, and success. And we recently added equity, success, uh, opportunities for all. So um, the quality of being fair and impartial, equity, and trust. And that brings us to our important advocacy, um, LGBTQ plus advocate. You want to place? So if you, if you guys know, advocacy is so important to every organization, but especially the LGBTQ plus real estate alliance, because when we're at the table, we are able to affect change that makes our lives better all over America. You know, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, however, there's still a lot of hate in this world. And unfortunately, we see it in the LGBTQ plus community. And as real estate professionals, we have an opportunity to change where a lot of this begins, and that's at home. So I think it's very important that we're all involved in organizations like the LGBTQ plus Real Estate Alliance, uh, so we can learn more about what we can do, and then we can actually take action and make those things happen. The Williams Institute at UCLA School of Law, we're super grateful for the chance to partner with the Real Estate Alliance to cultivate leadership around LGBT issues amongst those who are directly involved in helping people connect with homes. NAR is proud to partner with the Alliance to make sure that we have an active advocacy presence and that we are strengthening all of our DE&I efforts on the national level. We are in full communication and coordination to stop any type of discriminatory behaviors and actions, and most importantly, to tell your story to elected officials at all levels of government. The highest priority for the Equality Caucus is the Equality Act, which would ensure that no American is fired from the workplace or evicted from their homes or denied critical services and accommodations simply because of who you are and whom you love. There is nothing more important right now in terms of making sure that America lives up to its promise of equal opportunity for all than passing the Equality Act. We finally passed it out of the U.S. House of Representatives. We need the Senate to take it up and send it to a president who is the most LGBTQ plus friendly president in American history. We just need to close every gap there is in the United States. You should be lobbying your members of Congress, writing to them, meeting with them, emailing them. Every social movement requires both an inside game and the outside game. And you are the outside game. The Alliance represents the outside game that will make it possible to make equality a reality for every American. I think one of the things that's so great about being part of advocacy with the Alliance is we are all a part of a generation that saw the last of the firsts, and we're helping build a generation of the next. What we were told as kids, that one person, a couple people can change the world, I don't know that I ever truly believed it, but I do now because I've lived it. I hope you'll get involved because you might just make a world of difference to a kid out there who needs someone like you to stand up and to speak out on their behalf.
Um, Keller Williams um, has partnered with um, the Rainbow Alliance. We have a Rainbow Network within Keller Williams. It's a community as well. They have partnered with the West Real Estate Alliance. They're a nationwide group on real estate advocacy for the LGBTQ community. Um, and we're proud of that. I'm proud to have a, our office here that is a very diverse office. And I'm proud that we have a platform that people can feel comfortable having their business and running their business and feel a safe environment and a welcoming environment for agents to be successful. So um, we have some guests to talk about. So welcome oh Amethyst. First. Oh, I'm first. Be first. Come on up. So. <laughs> Okay. If anybody knows me, I'm not shy, but honestly talking about this makes me really uncomfortable. But um, being part of the community, it's affected my business in a good way. I put myself out there on the gay real estate side, the lesbian real estate side. I'm part of the Rainbow Network. Um, I'm part of the National Association of Gay and Lesbian Real Estate Professionals. And it's been hard for me because it was a little bit of an experiment. Do I want to put myself out there in this way and maybe pigeonhole myself and lose business from people that aren't down with that? But it's actually been really successful. So I've gained a lot of referrals through those websites. I've gained a lot of referrals from those clients. And it's become this big family. And actually, I want to have a really big gay party with all of my gay clients <laughs> majority of my clients have been gay and that and that's happened so it's been interesting to see it happen and it's a lot of people relocating from the bay area and they want to feel comfortable in the community that they're in it's also pressure for me because it's liability for me when they say what neighborhood should i live in you know and it's like okay well i can tell you you know from personal experience but i don't know what your, this neighbor is or what this neighbor believes you know so it's very, I'm like, I, I thought about you and I was going to talk about that. <laughs> it is, it, open, it opens you up to liability. So it's like a fine line you have to walk because you want to make people feel comfortable. You want them to move into a neighborhood that's inclusive, but you still can't control what every neighbor feels and yeah. thinks. So that's a, an interesting line to walk. But it's been a good ride so far. Thank you, Amethyst. <laughs> I want to say, and thank you, Amethyst, for those of you who have niches within your community, I encourage you to embrace those because they, they will help you grow and it won't pigeonhole you. You'll be seen as actually a more of an advocate, someone that does care, right? And I, I, I encourage you to embrace who you are and what you do, right? Especially in this business. The more you can align your business with the, who you are and what you believe, you're going to have more success in this business. All right. Jess, come on up. Uh, yeah. you see <laughs> Jess, what is uh, Pride BC? So I just came back from San Francisco Pride, actually, and it's awesome. It was such a good time. It was a huge party, but that's not all that Pride is, obviously. I feel that it's an opportunity for everyone to be openly vulnerable and be expressive and be able to live your truth and be in a environment where everyone accepts you, which is really nice. So that's what Pride means to me. Thank you. you can see a lot happening on the political side of things, especially with the Supreme Court and rights. So um, it's become more important than ever that we make sure we promote these ideals, promote equality uh, and equity within the real estate industry, especially when it comes to housing and discrimination. Those things. And above all else, please, please, please vote. That's right. Make sure we keep the rights. Okay, did you know more than 20% of the Rainbow Alliance net members accepted real estate agents were the top culprits in which housing discrimination against LGBTQ people showed up to solve? So complaints or discrimination attempts for on LGBTQ plus people in the community happened. 20% um, of the Alliance members were the ones who were involved in those situations because they were representing those clients who got discriminated. Not by them, but by another one, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, that's why it's important. 20% of the response shared that their experience of at least high levels of unconscious bias within the local real estate industry almost doubled the 11% report similarly about their own company. So people, agents are even saying that within my own company, there's 20% bias, unconscious bias against people in my group on LBC. So 
uh, versus um, that. So think about that. And also within our industry, literally we have a class in KW called Unconscious Bias. <laughs> if you want to take up the national level, I have actually taken it because I want to make sure that we promote an office that doesn't have unconscious biases. Maybe there's things I'm blind to um, as far as the office is concerned um, for community and so forth. Um, 68% respondents said blatant discrimination at the company level is extremely rare or non-existent. Only 40% felt that their way about that in the local real estate industry. So while it's rare, more rare at, in the office, you're seeing it outside there in the local community. But like you said, you don't know who the neighbors are. You don't know who clients are. And we've had incidences where um, um, racial motivation against some of our agents have happened. And um, I've had people try to get agents fired because of, because of their, their racial stances, right? So um just just note that 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 it is out there that is reality and i know those of you who work in minority communities or protected classes feel those discriminations time to time something interesting uh i don't know if you guys have seen this that house that's on the market right now and it's painted all yes. rainbow i think it was a spike painting of a rainbow house because if you read the description it's a for sale by owner and they said if you want to live next door to people that throw poison over the fence to your dogs or you know are hateful towards your lifestyle then come move in and buy our house and they've painted it all rainbow so it's like clearly a war with their neighbors <laughs> so and that's like on the market right now it is. Yeah. yeah they painted it all rainbow that's a spike painting yeah, no, man. <laughs> so it is out there it's just be aware of it there. um if you Want to be careful on how you handle things? Talk to our our broker. Those things can get um, uh, dicey. So we are here to help you with through those situations um, as well. So oh, I have something to add. Yes. That unconscious bias class is huge, and I really think that it's important. This is very important. I think it's also important that we don't assume anything about anyone in any sales cycle situation. Don't assume that they have anything like you and don't assume that they think like you and don't assume that they live their life like you and what that does is that opens you up to ask more questions to seek understanding and then you can give a level of service that's beyond what anybody else everyone else is just assuming what they want and telling them what they want. but if you can remove your bias and start asking more questions you can dig deeper and that's very important the reason it's an unconscious bias is because you don't realize you're doing that and that's because of the how you grew up and, and the principles you grew up with. I was even talking to another team leader about Juneteenth, and she was talking about like I was talking to her how to handle Juneteenth because she was like, I grew up in a household where like they put me in private school, and and my dad went to the principal when a black kid was in the school, wow. like that bad. Like I don't even know how to handle the situation, and so I encouraged her like go talk to your African American agents, your black agents, yeah. right? They will tell you, right? <laughs> Like go talk to them and create a relationship, and, and that will be your your so. Uh, I highly recommend the unconscious bias. It's a great class. It will expose things that you didn't think about that you should be thinking about. Like you said, especially in our culture right now, if you have a blatant, someone could take something really the wrong way, and they could put it out there pretty wide and be spiteful about it, and it it, it will affect your business at that point, right? So be very careful about that. So. And that class is W next. Page. It is KDB learning page. We will put it in the email that will go out. Put it out. They do it like a few times a year. Oh, yeah. oh they do it like every yeah, every. Yeah, I think yeah. it's every month or every other oh. month. So you can do it. There's two classes that unbiased, and then there's um, uh, the color of the industry. So it's talking about color how real color real estate, how yeah. dip, how real estate agents compared to the real estate agents compared to the population, how housing population versus what who actually own houses. So talking talking about a lot of those structures and how of it. Any other anyone want to comment online or here? I just wanted to make a, a quick comment. Um, I want to say, are, I want to say one thing. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> go right. Go ahead, go ahead, Claudia. Go ahead, Claudia. <laughs> I'm in the middle of making cookies for a client for a property that closed. So, um, but I wanted to say that as a former educator, I am so pleased and proud to be a part of an organization that acknowledges our diversity and that speaks up about it. It isn't just something that we keep in our hearts. We speak about it, we share it, and we are really trying to live it. So I've got goosebumps just saying all that. And I think it's just 
I'm proud of KW and our office. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. All right, indeed. So anyway, I was just going to say SAR has the, um, we've changed the name a couple of times, but the Cultural Diversity Inclusion uh, Organization, basically it's a committee. And uh, we have several um, different events constantly. We just have done the Pride uh, events. Uh, we were a participant of that uh, along with Juneteenth and everything else. But uh, we still have spaces that are in those committees if anyone wants to join and uh, you know be heard. Uh, it is a, a great committee. Matter of fact, it's what's driving uh, a lot of good ideals and things through what's happening in the SAR right now. If you want to join, it's really good to use your influence. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Please come. Thank you, everyone. Hello, John. Oh. Yes. Uh, it's me, Correct. Jose. Um, you guys know I can hardly connect due to some other um, responsibilities, but I want to take a couple minutes uh, and thank you all. As many of you guys know, my daughter in law was in a bad, and my granddaughter on a bad car accident. They got hit by a drunk driver where she lost her life. <clears throat> and there has been a lot of support to my son and myself and the family. And even though I don't show up to the office quite often, I want to say thank you on behalf of my son and myself to all of you for your support. Thank you very much to, especially uh, Desiree, Amy, Sam, and you and just everybody in the office. I want to say thank you for the support. About a month ago, I don't know if you saw the film. It was an accident. So be careful. It is a little bit crazy. You see it on the news every other day. It's pretty crazy. Uh, we're proud to support our agents. Um, if you are in need, let us know. We have resources to help. Um, we can connect you with things and, and provide help as well. Oh. Anyone else would like to speak? Oh, no. Um, just four ways to be respectful of LGBTQ um, ally. Recognize your privilege and use it for good. Um, you guys run your own business. You guys interact with people all the, all the time. You have a platform. So please recognize and use it for good. Please stay away from negativity. We actually just let an agent go because she couldn't stop being negative harshly on, on social media, right? That is not our standard, right? As a company, we do not represent that. So please. Please um, you realize you have a privilege from your status as an agent in the community. Use that for good. Um, ask educated questions. Do your own research. Don't assume, as Amy was saying, don't assume things about people. That is how you're going to get in trouble, even from a legal standpoint, a liability side. That is how you get in trouble. Don't assume things. Ask questions. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I can tell you in this job, I had to be uncomfortable with certain racial situations um, and certain, and it it you it is uncomfortable there's no if you don't experience those often it's just an uncomfortable situation you have to get comfortable with those situations and have those discussions and obviously the more you can the wider your business will be right that's a good part the better person you are the wider business you'll be um follow the lead of your lgbtq peers so follow lead like you said advocacy doing those things working on the committee with sar those things can help grow the committee and grow our awareness and advocacy I wanted to thank you everyone who showed up for our pride meeting. Um, thank you. We have no team meeting next week because it's a sort of a 4th of July holiday. We're trying to take that off and we realize you probably have multi-day hangovers after that. So um, we're, we're, we think we're probably gonna have low attendance because some of you just take the whole week off. So I'm looking at you, but let us know. But thank you, thank you everyone. It's been a great June. We'll see you in July. Everyone have a safe and fun 4th of July holiday. Let's have some homes too. So. <laughs>